there's a couple other birders here with a scope. Looks like they're looking at something. So hopefully they have it. I'm gonna go say hi and see what's going on. Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. I'm in Indiana because my girlfriend Claire actually presented at the American Chemical Society conference. And so, gonna try to find some rare birds, but just decided to take a walk to see kind of some of the local species. And uh, this park by the White River, right over here, found some spring migrants. There's song sparrows around, um, juncos are calling. So cool to kind of see some of that stuff and then later on can go for some rarities. The park was filled with the songs of spring migrants and we enjoyed listening to them and seeing some of them sing. Really nice to hear some of those songs of spring. Actually a beautiful day out here. Really nice to walk along the river too and just kind of get a view of the city and everything. After walking along the river, we moved to a more urban area, and the species we saw reflected the habitat change. Had a group of European starlings and house sparrows in a bush, so just a non-native mashup but the starlings even though they're not native they're very beautiful birds they have some really uh, interesting coloration if you see them in the right light they have a real nice iridescence so even though they're non-native a cool bird to appreciate especially in urban environments while walking to the car we did have a nice fly over bald eagle to cap off our urban birding adventure checked off some nice urban species here at the state park um, never really done dedicated birding in Indiana, so it's cool to be able to do that. And I'm really excited to see if we can find some of those rare birds later. After checking out the urban birds, we moved to a reservoir to try to find a rare little gull. We're at Eagle Creek Reservoir, and this is where a little gull has been seen. It looked like someone was here earlier and didn't have it, but it's been here for a while, so hopefully it's still around. But it's a big expanse to look through, and uh... American coots out on the water, so some more uh, birds associated with spring out here already. So excited to pick through those and hopefully we can also pick out the little gull. Do you think we're gonna find the little gull? I hope gull? so. A little gull just sounds so cute. I really want to see it. And I've never seen, you've never seen that either, have nope. you? So it would be new for both of us and that's really exciting. A lot of, a lot of land, well a lot of water to explore. This is a big, big reservoir. Yeah. In the reservoir we saw plenty of birds enjoying the open water. Had some Bonaparte's gulls, but no little gull. Looking for that dark underwing on this bird. Um, great blue heron was cool to see. There's some common loons out there, always a nice bird. Definitely feels like it's more spring here than it is up in Wisconsin right now, but we're gonna just go further up the reservoir and see if maybe the gull moved up a little bit. Although there were many Bonaparte's gulls, it didn't appear as though the little gull was in view with them. With no luck on the gull, we drove to an open field where some interesting long spurs seem to have taken up residence. So we've now moved to an area called the Prairie Burn where there have been some Smith's long spurs reported. And so there's agricultural land along the side and there's this trail that you can walk. So we're going to walk on the trail, see if we can find any of the Smith's. It's literally the middle of nowhere. There was a meadow lark on the way and a horn lark. So that's pretty much where you'd, I'd expect to find Smiths near the agricultural field. So I think we're in the right spot. We walk the path near the agricultural fields, finding some common species before moving to the farm field across the road, where several other birders were also looking. Here, we saw large flocks of birds, but they were far out in the field. Later on, we did confirm they were Smith's longspurs based on their white shoulder patch. However, the views were very unsatisfying. We are having medium levels of luck as I'm, I'm pretty sure we saw the birds 
but our pictures of the birds weren't that great because they would just leave. Um, but the sun's setting and it's really pretty, so we have that at least. We've seen some flocks that definitely could be them, but they're just too far out to really confirm. So it's kind of a waiting game at this point, but it's really beautiful to be out here and a uh, gorgeous day. As the sun set, we had to depart for the day, but I returned the next morning on my way back up to Wisconsin to see if they would be more cooperative. Back at the Smiths field, there's a couple other birders here with a scope. Looks like they're looking at something, so hopefully they have it. I'm gonna go say hi and see what's going on. With extreme winds whipping, I walked over to the other birders who did indeed have the Smiths in their view. I eventually sat down in the area and watched the well camouflaged birds forage and fly around, even coming within a few feet of me. The Smith's longspur is a small and unique bird that can be difficult to find. They nest in the remote Arctic during the breeding season, in winter in the central United States, where they can normally be seen in fields. The name longspur comes from their elongated hind toe, and they are one of four longspur species found in North America. During the breeding season, males and females may have multiple mates, and in fact, females may mate up to 350 times in a week. Male Smith longspurs in breeding plumage develop a pumpkin-colored stomach with black and white facial markings and white outer tail feathers along with a white shoulder patch. Non-breeding and immature birds are tan, patterned with browns, and a streaked stomach. They feed mostly on seeds and insects, and are currently considered a species of low conservation concern. These smiths are incredible, but it's so windy. The camera's really shaken. This is much better than anything we had yesterday. They are so well camouflaged in these fields. And uh, what they're doing is they're coming out of the field to feed on this. And that's what they seem to really love to eat here. Um, so I'm going to kind of creep down low to the ground and see if we can get uh, some even better views. Uh, great experience with these birds, though. What an incredible Smith's Longspur experience. I'm glad to be out of the wind, uh, but it was amazing. Those two ladies were here and then we were watching them together and they went to look for a different bird. So I just kind of sat there and got low to the ground and one was like right in front of me. They were flying past my face. They just kind of like got used to me being there. And I was just like enjoying watching them feed and you just like, sometimes you just see a bird, but other times you get like that experience. Like you just have like, that connection, you feel like you're part of the environment. That's what this was. It was really neat to watch those birds, especially because they can be, you know, really hard to spot. Like they blend in so well. And some cool facts about these birds is males and females actually have a bunch of different partners to mate with. And one bird was documented mating 350 times in one week. So a uh, very prolific species that Smith's long spur, but couldn't ask for much more, much better than yesterday. Glad to see those birds here in Indiana. I left the Smiths field feeling satisfied with my experience seeing these caramel colored birds. It was also fun to bird in some new locations and I enjoyed learning more about the species that call the Hoosier State home. Have you ever birded in Indiana before? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.